Today in Provo, Utah, opening arguments in a case that pits two daughters against their own father. The question, did a prominent doctor murder his beautiful wife in the couple's bathtub? And did he do it to make room for his mistress? They seem like the perfect couple, and in a case full of twists and turns, his daughters believe he almost got away with murder. Here's my co-anchor, Dan Abrams, for our series, Crime and Punishment. Sir, this is 911. Can I help you? Today, a gaunt Martin McNeil sat stone-faced as his frantic 911 call was played for jurors in the Utah courtroom where he's fighting for his freedom. Is your wife breathing? She is not. I am a physician. I got CPR in progress. McNeil is charged with killing his wife, Michelle, a former beauty queen and mother of eight, in the bathroom of their suburban home. Your oath as but it's a, a juror, case that never would have come to trial if not for the single-minded determination of Martin's own daughters, who say they're trying to hold him accountable for the death of their beloved mother in 2007. My father planned and orchestrated uh, my mother's my mother's death. Um, he, Simple as that. Yeah, he did, and and uh, he thought he get could get away with it. He explained to a final witness that he was glad the bitch was dead. The prosecutor painted a portrait of McNeil as a man who used his own medical training to Prior meticulously to plan the murder of his wife, and even bragged about it afterwards. Told, the defendant told this witness that it would be hard to prove it was murder because authorities could conclude his wife took too many medications and accidentally fell asleep in the tub. But the defense argues the evidence against him is purely circumstantial. It's wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Martin McNeil is not guilty. They acknowledge that McNeil, now 57, had affairs and is no angel, but insist he's no killer either. We probably shouldn't let emotions cloud our judgment. We may think he is a total jerk, and that's natural, but it's very critical that during this trial you set aside your emotion and you evaluate this case based upon the facts of the case. This strange saga began on an April morning in this gated community south of Salt Lake City. A distraught sounding Martin McNeil called 911. Okay, is she conscious? <laughs> McNeil either hung up on the dispatcher or was disconnected twice and provided the wrong address. This meant lost precious minutes in the fight to save Michelle's life. And maybe most troubling, he said he couldn't remove his dying wife from the bathtub alone. Okay, did you, did you get her out of the water? I can't. I couldn't the water out. When police showed up, McNeil said his wife passed out while preparing the tub, and they soon ruled it an accident. After all, they had no reason to suspect Martin, a family man, a prominent local doctor, and leader in this conservative Mormon community. The medical examiner determined the official cause of death to be from natural causes. So the case seemed to be closed. I thought that if this is a, a healthy woman that died, that there would be some sort of big police investigation. Their police report onto my mother's death is about two and a half paragraphs. But daughter Alexis was suspicious, to say the least. She says just days before her death, Michelle McNeil shared a startling secret. She said, if anything happens to me, make sure it wasn't your dad. And I said, Mom, what do you mean? You know, what are you saying? And she just said, you know, make sure if anything happens to me, it wasn't your dad. This was the same father Alexis and Rachel had grown up idolizing. We thought... What an inspiration to become a doctor, to become a lawyer. I wanted to, you know, follow in my father's footsteps. I always wanted to be a doctor, just like him. But after his 50th birthday, they say things changed, that their dad became obsessed with his appearance, working out feverishly and visiting tanning salons. There were also unexplained disappearances from home. And finally, they say he suddenly insisted his wife, the former beauty queen, get a facelift. And my mom had never talked about that before or anything. She'd never been into plastic surgery. So why would this doctor want cosmetic surgery for a woman he was hoping to remove from his life? According to prosecutors, so he could administer or over-administer a powerful cocktail of painkillers and sedatives as she recovered. Alexis asked the defendant what he had given her. He stated that he had probably over-medicated her. Alexis began to track all of the food 
beverages, medications, and other things consumed by Michelle in addition to taking her vitals. And she recorded all of this information in a little book she kept near Michelle's bed. The motive, according to prosecutors, this woman, Gypsy Willis, with whom McNeil was allegedly having an affair. But this was no fling. Shortly after Michelle's death, he moved Gypsy into his home and announced that she would now be the family's new nanny. She didn't cook. She didn't clean. She didn't take care of the children in any way. Michelle's daughters wrote letters to newspapers and pleaded with authorities. But no one would listen. No one, that is, until they talked to this man. Investigation is this a Whitney? Veteran investigator Doug Whitney at the Utah County Attorney's Office so reviewed the what the women had collected and started to investigate. I will simply say that I believe that Mark McNeil is a sociopath. As Whitney chipped away, he learned troubling details about Martin McNeil's past. His entire career is based on falsified transcripts from different colleges. We basically found out that our entire lives had been based and surrounded on lies, that everything about our experience with our father was a lie. Investigators say Martin and Gypsy teamed up to steal the identity of Martin's own adopted Ukrainian daughter and give it to Gypsy, apparently so she could collect benefits. They went into court and changed the birth date, 20 years. That's called perjury. Now there's two people with that social security number. There's two people with that name. The investigation finally led to Martin's conviction in 2009 on two counts of aggravated identity theft and Gypsy on a related fraud charge. The last sentencing hearing, the only thing he said to me is, I hope you're happy, Alexis. I hope you're happy with what you've done. With Martin and Gypsy locked away, investigators turned their attention to Michelle's death and pieced together the evidence to bring the murder case his daughters, Alexis and Rachel, had long sought. At a hearing last year, the women even held up photos of their mother in the courtroom. You've got all of this evidence that sure seems to implicate Martin McNeil. You've got his own daughters who think that he ought to be convicted. And yet you're saying this is not a slam dunk for prosecutors? It's not a slam dunk for prosecutors, despite all the evidence they have. There's a critical piece of evidence that the jury will not hear, and for good reason. And that is Michelle McNeil's statement to her daughter a few days before she died, if anything happens to me, make sure your dad didn't do it. And today the defense argued there's no evidence that Michelle was even murdered at all. While the investigation subsequent to Michelle's death raises questions about the possible role of her husband, there is nothing in the autopsy or toxicology findings that proves her death was from an unnatural cause. As for McNeil's daughters, they say they're hopeful that this could be the end of a long journey for justice. This was very well planned out. He almost got away with it, and let's hope that the jury convicts my father.